What's up, rock stars? Coach Betty Rocker here. Welcome to my gym. This is my home gym setup. I don't have nearly as much stuff as a full gym would have, but this is similar to what you might be able to set up in a garage gym. I've got a squat cage, some barbells and weight plates, some dumbbells, assorted stretchy bands. This is a really great uh, foundation for being able to do heavier weight training from home. Of course, you can take a workout like this to the gym. And for those of you who are transitioning or who are looking for an opportunity to progress from working primarily with body weight or dumbbells into working with heavier weights, I'm going to be showing you options today for doing all of these moves with dumbbells so that you can build up and progress as you go. Programs that I have like Lioness really implement this type of weight training and also in Rock Your Life we have several series of weight training workouts that utilize progressive overload which is where we're looking for each workout to either increase our reps in our rep range or increase the amount of weight in the workouts that we're doing and the moves that we're doing. Super fun, just another type of training, another style. Don't be daunted or uh, overwhelmed. It's really quite simple to, to make this transition and if you stick with me today, I'm gonna do that with you. So we'll start out with a nice warm up for our full body as this is a full body workout. So go ahead and stand tall, roll those shoulders back, engage your core, bend your knees, walk it out. We're gonna do some slow burpees. So come to a tall or kneeling plank. Give me a push up, walk your feet in to your hands, load the weight in your heels, powerfully drive up, squeezing your glutes, opening your chest, drop it back down, walk your feet back, option to come to the kneeling position or tall plank, push up, come back, good. We're gonna go nice and slow and controlled here, just warming up the body, warming up the entire body with these slow, effective, low impact burpees. Nice. This is a full body workout today. So we want to warm the chest and shoulders. We want to engage the core, the legs, all of the things. You got this. Come on up, down, back, push up. Keep that core nice and tight, back flat, whether your knees are down or up. You've got this down, back, push up, come forward, power up. On this one, I want you to stand tall. Feel free to hold on to your wall or something beside you as you're standing. We're just gonna do a few reverse lunges. Same, same leg, repeating. Good. Keeping that front knee aligned with the front toe, keeping your chest and body upright. Imagine you had a tall crown on, switch to the other leg. Just a few here. Just some body weight lunges, nice and slow and controlled. Just getting into those legs. Last one, well done. Let's go ahead and grab either a towel or a stretchy band. We're just gonna bring our arms up and out. I just want you to have something to gently pull against. It really, it doesn't, it can be anything. So we're just gonna stand feet about hip distance apart. And then we'll just bring our arms in front of us and behind us, keeping some tension on the band, allowing this to open up our shoulders and chest even more. Nice job. Keep your core engaged. If you feel comfortable, you can bring your band all the way down behind you and all the way in front of you. Your shoulder joint was designed to move like this. And this is one of the reasons why it's essential that when we train, we train in balance. So all of the stability for the shoulder joint comes from the muscular strength of the muscles that surround it. So we wanna really be sure to strengthen them all the way around. You can go ahead and play with some side to side motions with your band. You can bring it up and around. Nice, whatever feels good and supportive here. Nice. And you can go ahead and set it aside when you're done. So we're gonna start, our first move is a pause back squat. We're gonna do a warm up set of squats first with a lighter amount of resistance than what we'll be using for our working sets. So if you wanna start with dumbbells or dumbbells are the option you have, go for a lighter set of dumbbells than what you anticipate you could actually squat with for eight to 12 reps normally. So if you're using dumbbells, you're gonna put them up on your shoulders. If you wanna warm up and you're using a barbell, I tend to do like one set generally. If it's my very first move of the day, 
Like this is my first move of the day. When we get into some of the later moves, I won't do this much warming up because I wanna really give my legs the opportunity to get warm for this. So I'm gonna use just the barbell and I'm gonna do some a warm up set with the barbell. So when you get the barbell on your shoulders, it should be on the meaty part of your traps. You should, your hands should be in a comfortable grip position out beside your shoulders. Keep your elbows and shoulders back, lift up, and then you're going to keep your feet just a little wider than hip distance. It's natural for your toes to turn out slightly. Part of why I do my workouts barefoot is because I have the luxury of training in my own gym at home, and I like to really feel my foot position with the mat so that I'm not in a shoe that's messing up my arches. Just stand here for a moment, engage your core, find balance, and then send your hips back, engaging your core, knees track in line with toes, power up, squeeze your glutes. Engage your core as you come down, bracing it, and power up. Good. Lower down, power up. What I'd like for you to do right away here is get used to the pause. So I want you to hold it for a three second pause at the base and then drive up. This is gonna feel nice in our warm up set, <laughs> but as we add additional weight and resistance, it's gonna get tougher. So with this amount that you've got right now, you could do 15 to 20 reps easily. So that's, that's kind of the goal with this first, just sort of powerful little warm up set that we're doing together. Nice job. Up. We're not gonna do 15 to 20 reps, of course. We're just gonna do eight to 10 or so, just to get into our legs, really setting our base and our foundation. And after you get through that, go ahead and set your weight back on its rack. If you're holding dumbbells, bend your knees to set them off to the side. Now we're gonna load up some weight. We're gonna do this move for three rounds. Same, same move, sticking with it before we move on to our next move. I'm gonna go ahead and load up some weight plates. If you're using dumbbells, please feel free to grab a heavier set of dumbbells. And the amount of weight that you're looking to add is so that you could do in that eight to 12 rep range. Now my first working set today, I'm actually gonna go a little lighter than what I know I can do. I'm gonna do about 85% of what I'm gonna be working with in my next two rounds. So if you have the opportunity to do this, it's just because it's our first move of the day and I just wanna continue to support my body as it's getting ready for these lifts. So once again, getting in position where the weight's distributed across my upper traps and not on any bony structures, not on my neck. Let's go ahead and pick it up and it, you should feel the resistance this time. And we're gonna step, for, step our feet to a nice neutral position, maybe just slightly wider than hip distance, not trying to force our feet forward or out. Just let them fall where they naturally do. Engage your core, brace your abs. Send your hips back as if you were sitting down. Keep your back straight, pause at the base, and then powerfully drive up, squeezing your glutes. Your goal is eight to 12 reps. I want you to really pay attention to counting your reps here on this set. Don't worry if I do less than you or more than you. It's not a competition. You're here for your own workout today. You got this. We're all calibrating. We're all seeing what weight is appropriate for us. So for me, if this is truly about 85% of what's right for me today, I'll be adding weight in my next set. Maybe if I'm only able to hit about eight reps with this weight though, I'll stick with it. If I'm able to go up to 10 to 12 reps, then I know I could use more weight. So that's kind of how you gauge your um, choice of adding more weight. And each week that we perform this workout, we're gonna be tracking our weight, tracking our reps, and looking for that progressive overload opportunity where we either add reps or we add weight, staying within that eight to 12 rep range. I got one more to go. Hold that form, pause at the base, powerfully drive up. That pause will really get you. Now we rest, have a nice breather. We're not doing a cardiovascular workout. We're doing a low impact strength workout. Both high intensity cardio and this type of lifting, both are high volume 
workouts for your system. It's a lot of engagement, muscle tissue, your heart's working hard, sending blood to all these heavy, heavy working muscles in your legs, glutes, and even your back and core, which are stabilizing you as you do the squat. So feel free to hydrate yourself before we move on to our second set. And I also invite you to write down your warm-up set as well as your working set weight and how many reps you did. So I'll write down my warm-up so that I remember for next week how that was for me when I do this workout again. This is part of a strength series. There we go. So I used that much weight, that many reps, and I'm gonna to continue to track that as I move through this workout. Now, I definitely felt like I could go a little bit heavier, not much heavier, just a little bit heavier. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide a little bit more weight onto my bar. I'm using dumbbells, and what you had in the last set was just right for you or you don't have a lot of options, stick with what you've got. And you can always, if you feel like the weight's a little too light for you, do a few extra reps totally fine. When you feel like your heart rate's come down and you're feeling recovered, we're going to go ahead and get into our next set with this move. So once again, feet are about hip distance apart. We balance the bar appropriately, engage our core, send the hips back about 90 degree bend with the knees if that's available to you, and then drive your hips up. I want a little pause at the bottom. Good work. Squeeze your glutes at the top. Really brace your abs as you come down. <sighs> Breathing in as you come down. Breathing out as you come up. <sighs> Great job. <sighs> Keep your knees tracking in line with your toes. Don't let them collapse in. <sighs> nice job. <sighs> so strong. Got about two to go. How are you doing? So strong. Finish your set. You might have a couple extra reps than I did. Be where you're at. Go ahead and write down your reps and how much weight you use for that second set. Rehydrate. If you're drinking your amino acids, your free form aminos, this is a great time to be drinking them during your workout. I'm using Rock and Restore, of course, from Whole Betty by Betty Rocker. Yum. Oh, so good. And we really want those, we want to be fueled coming into workouts like this. We want to have adequate energy to push through. This is high volume training. I would never do this on an empty stomach, as in woke up, did this without eating, never would not be good for my energy at all. So be sure that you're fueling adequately prior to and after a workout like this. And if you're like me, please uh, supplement with some aminos during your workout. I'm in my 40s. It's really essential, especially as we get in that 40s and up period of our life, when our body's not absorbing aminos as readily as it did earlier on that we are increasing our amino acid consumption, both with whole foods, which is the baseline, and potentially with some supplements. All right, this is the last set of these squats. So feet are hip distance, maybe just a little wider. Feet are in a natural, neutral position. And we're gonna squat it back. Knees track in line with toes, adding that little pause at the base. Good, feel free to adjust the amount of resistance. If you had too much resistance in the last set, no problem, back it off. And you'll know if you were, it was hard to get to eight reps, then you know you had a little bit too much for this. And keep up the great work. Stick with it. Do not bend forward at the waist. Your back needs to be upright. So you really want to work on posterior chain strength. If you're finding that your body is bending forward, keep your weight back. You should be light through your toes. Core is braced. Great job. Come on. I know these are tough. Oh, so good. So strong, you got this. 
Come on. Oh, last one for me. Feel free to do a couple more. Maybe your pace is a little quicker than mine. Whew. Let's get our weight plates <sighs> removed. If you were using barbells, you can put your equipment away. We're gonna move on to our next sequence, which is an upper body back strengthening move. <sighs> Feel my heart rate's up. How are you? How are you feeling? Part of why workouts like this take a little longer is because we ask a lot from our body. We need recovery in between our rounds and reps. We also need time to transition and transition our space and equipment. So it's always a good opportunity to catch your breath, let your heart rate come down as you are transitioning. So for this next move, it's an underhand row. And that means your palms are gonna face out and we're gonna row our elbows up and back. I'm gonna be using my barbell for this. Very, very simple to do this with dumbbells as well. You'll hold your dumbbells, palms out, and you'll hinge your hips back, keeping your back nice and flat, core tight and braced, and you'll just draw your elbows up and back just like this. Totally great option to do the, the dumbbells. I'm gonna use my barbell. I know how much weight is appropriate for me for this, especially for this first set. I'm gonna find out how many reps I can do. I wanna be in that eight to 12 rep range. I forgot to write down my last set of squats, but I'm gonna do that after this. Hinge your hips back, keep your core tight, flat, straight back. Draw your elbows up and back, bringing your barbell up to touch the base of your rib cage. Count your reps. Great job, come on. Feel your back working. Think about those muscles engaging as you pull that bar up and back. All right, I was right in the middle for that set. I felt like 10 was just the right amount. For you, you may have gone up to 12 with the weight that you were holding, that's great. Really where you wanna end your end feel for moves like this is where you feel maybe you could do two more. So you don't wanna completely fatigue yourself. You just wanna to go to where you feel like maybe I could do two more, but I pretty much feel like I'm done. And that's sort of how you calibrate how much weight is appropriate. Remember, this is our first time doing this workout. It's a calibration. Don't worry, you can adjust in the next couple of sets. Let's go ahead and write down. If you didn't already write down your last set of squats, be sure to write down how many reps you did and if you changed weight at all. For this underhand row, go ahead and write down how many reps you did and how much weight you used for that first set. We did a really nice warm up at the beginning of this workout with our slow burpees. We did a lot of push ups, our back got a lot of warm, warming up, and then also moving the squat weights around also got your upper body warm and moving. But if you feel like you'd like to do lighter to warm up for the row, feel free. I usually don't feel like I need that. Uh, but again, listen to your body. Know that that's an option. Great, set two. Back pull row, underhand. Again, palms face out as we pick up our weights. And make sure you bend your knees to pick them up. And I'm gonna face my mirror so I'm not gonna quite face you. Really helpful with this type of training to have something to check your form in. My shoulders are back and down in their sockets as if they were up against a wall. As I send my hips back, my back stays straight. My neck stays aligned with my back. And now I'm gonna pull my elbows up and back, counting my reps. You got this. Come on. Try to hit the same number of reps as last set if you used the same weight. So for me, I'm right in my sweet spot with this amount of weight, hitting 10 reps. That means I have room to improve with this amount of weight. Maybe next week I'll hit 11 reps when I do this workout. Uh, 
And then once I get up to 12 and it's easy for me or consistent for me to do 12 reps each round with this weight, I will increase the amount of weight, which will drop me back down to that eight to 10 rep range. And then I'll continue to build. This is the essence of progressive overload. Let's go ahead and write down our reps again. Great job. And we're gonna do one more set of these. Feel free to do a little mobility here, a little arm swing. If you need a little extra time in between these sets, please feel free to take it. When you're ready, bend your knees, pick up your weighted weights with an underhand grip. Use your reflection or a mirror Hinge your hips back, keeping your back straight, core braced, shoulders back and down, and we go up again with our elbows, counting our reps. <sighs> Great job. <sighs> Finish your set, and when you're done, Bend your knees, set your weighted objects down, and write down your reps. We're gonna move on to move three, which is sumo deadlifts. So this is a really fun complement to the squat. We're gonna be working some of the outer aspect of the glutes, the inner thighs. So let's just go ahead and use, let's just set ourselves up for success before we load weight onto our bar or onto your dumbbells. So you can grab two dumbbells that are lighter and, or you can grab your bar and step your feet out wide, turning your toes out, shoulders back and down, and then send your butt back as if you were gonna sit down and then drive your hips up and forward. I'm gonna turn to the side. So we really want the weight to be grazing the front of our shins Notice how my back is flat and upright. All the strength is coming from the glutes as I lift and lower. Good. Just showing our body where we're going before we load too much weight on here. Good. If you feel confident in your sumo deadlift, and again, this is not a workout for beginners. This is for intermediate to advanced, as you do want to have some foundation for doing these lifts before you get into adding a lot of weight. I'm gonna go ahead and load up my barbell. I invite you to grab heavier dumbbells if that's what you're using today. And once again, we are working in that eight to 12 rep range. So choose a weight that you believe you can hit that range with. And I'm not gonna do specifically a warm up set because my hips and glutes are really warmed up. Feel free to add a warm up set to this that's lighter than what you think you're gonna go with at any point in any of these moves, and then build up. It's always better to be conservative, especially if you're newer to this type of training, even if you know the form. All right. We've got three sets here of these. Now with heavier weight, what I enjoy is an overhand underhand grip on my barbell. For dumbbells, you can hold them like you would normally. With dumbbells, it's really important you're not swinging them out. Um, the lighter the weight, the more your tendency is gonna be to like let them float out. I want you to feel your shins touching your bar or your weights at all times when you're coming up and down. So bend your knees, get a grip on the bar, I've got an overhand, underhand grip. That's what's comfortable for me. You might like it like this. You might like it like this. It's all good. Shoulders back. Engage, brace, really brace your abs and drop your hips down and then pull your bar up. As you send your hips back, let your hips drop down. Good, reset, bring your body upright. Drop your hips down a bit here. Pull up and through, working with your glutes. Come back down the same way, <sighs> up and through. Feel your glutes working. Make sure your knees are tracking in line with your toes, they're pointing out and away. <sighs> Don't round your back ever here. 
Nice, flat, straight back. Nice, upright body. Good. I'm just going to turn to give you a little more of a side view as I do my last few reps. So I'm not starting here. We're going to drop the butt down. Body is upright, powerfully coming through, squeezing the glutes. Coming back down and through. Same way we came up. The weights just come in close to our shins. Embracing those, those abs each time we lift. <sighs> Counting your reps. You may be done. You may still be going for a few more. I'm going to do two more. <sighs> Last one for me. <sighs> and down with control. You can also throw <laughs> your weights down if you want to. Um, that doesn't really work for me in the setup I'm in today. It might disturb someone who lives nearby, so I set mine down. So write down how much weight you used and write down your reps. Take a breather. How was that for you? If you found that the volume wasn't really that intense, go ahead and add more weight to your bar or to your dumbbells that you're using. If you found it was super easy to hit 12 and you could blow past it, try going up a little bit more in weight in the next round. If you found you were right in that sweet spot, between eight to 12, stick with what you got. It's important that we take a break here. Let the muscles recover. Excellent work. How are you feeling? Give yourself a body scan. See how you feel. Feel free to use this time if you want to do a couple extra stretches. I'm going to do a little quick pigeon stretch here. I do stretch pigeon on both sides. My physical therapist has a little move that I'm supposed to do to fire up the right side of my glutes. So I'm just going to do that real quick here. He likes me to do this when I'm <laughs> in doing my workout. So please just feel free to do a couple quick stretches as you're moving. And we're gonna go right back to do our second set of deadlifts, sumo deadlifts. So adjust your stance here. You don't have to be super wide. Just have your feet out wider than hip distance, wider than you did in your squats. Center your feet so that they are, you know, at the same amount of distance down your bar. And if you're using dumbbells, you'll be just grabbing your dumbbells and holding them in close to your body. So let's get our grip, drop your glutes down, engage your core, lift up through your chest, powerfully drive up through your legs and glutes. Down, reset each time. You don't need to rush these. That is not a good plan. Reset, brace your abs. Good. Feel this working through your glutes. Well done. Shoulders stay back. Squeeze between your shoulder blades. Don't let your arms collapse forward. Drop your butt down a little bit as you come down. Resetting, elevating that chest. Well done. Come on. 8 to 12. Count your reps. You got this. I got two to go. Be where you're at. Great job. Now, for some of you, if you're using weight plates, it can be helpful to use these little scrunchy pieces that will help hold your plates in position. I don't usually use mine, <laughs> but when I'm in the gym, I always use them. It's just a safety precaution to make sure the weights don't go careening off to the side. So I just wanna make sure that I at least mention that to you. Uh, I'm just used to my own weights and my body and don't use them at home 
but if I'm in a public gym, I always use them. Just want to give you some good tips. <laughs> All right, have a breather, have a quick stretch, have a quick sip of water, some hydration, whatever feels good. And we will move on to our final set. Breathe. Doing great. All right, last set, best set. Are you ready? Here we go. Step your feet out nice and wide. Knees track in line with toes. Engage your core, shoulders back and down. We're gonna bend our knees, sending our hips back. Reach your hands down, grip your bar or your dumbbells, and open your chest. Use the power of your backside of your body and glutes to pull you upright. Reset, drop the hips down, power up again. Oh, great job. You got this. Let's do the last set of these. strong. Count your reps. I got two to go. Be where you're at. Stop when you're done. sure to write down your reps. If you didn't write down your last set, write them down now. Oh my gosh. Whew. If you changed weight or anything like that, make sure you make a note of that. Oh my goodness. All right. Hi, Bodie. Bodie's taking a nap back here. He's working hard. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and clean up my weight plates. Your next move, it's going to be an incline press. If you don't have a bench or a rack, you can do barbell presses on the floor with your dumbbells. You can also do a makeshift incline press with your dumbbells on your exercise ball, leaning your back up against your ball. All of these are effective ways to do a chest press. If you are doing an incline bench, a couple things that you'll want to get used to. One, put your bar up pretty much at chest height, and we're going to slip our bench underneath our rack, and we'll have a couple things to test out as we do that. You can also, if you have, happen to have a bench but no barbell, you can also do this on your bench with barbell, I mean with dumbbells, just pressing up with your bench elevated. Quick demo of how to do this with an exercise ball, if you've got that option, is to go ahead and sit back against your ball supporting your upper back and your butt's basically hovering over the floor and you use your, your dumbbells like this, pressing up, drawing your elbows back, listening to the cues that I'm gonna be giving once I get set up to do my working set. No need to rush, no pressure here. We wanna give our body plenty of opportunity to work, get stronger, I'm trying to find where to put the exercise ball out of the way. I'm gonna move these and get my bench set up. It's always nice to have some options, even if you are planning to use a certain type of equipment or a certain type of movement. If you happen to be in the gym, sometimes you can't access the equipment that you hope to because someone else is using it. It's always nice to have a little backup. All right, so how to position the bench. 
for inclines. What you're going to want is that when you sit on the bench and have your head below the bar, is that that bar is about lined up with your nose. And the reason for this is that we want to be able to reach the bar with our hands. Hands are approximately above your shoulders. Elbows can flare out a little bit. But what you want is that when you press up, once you have that bar off, that it's far enough out that it's not going to hit your rack. Okay? So my feet don't quite reach the floor here. <laughs> I am five feet tall. So I've got them up balanced on my bench. That doesn't mean that you have to. Engage your core, press your lower back into your incline, and grab your bar. Bring it down to your chest, rest it just above your chest, and then press up. Pause for a beat at the top, lower down. Pause for a beat at the top, lower down. Good. Eight to 12 is your rep range here. You can breathe out as you come up. Breathe in as you come down. Keep your wrists aligned and straight. Nice job. Let your elbows come out. Feel your lats engaging to stabilize you as you come down. Those muscles along the side of your body, along the side of your ribs, underneath your arms. Good, eight to 12, you got this. When you're done with your set, you're gonna guide your weight back into its cradle. If you're using dumbbells, just set them down at your sides. So you're gonna go ahead and write down your reps and how much weight you used. For me personally, I was at the low end of the rep range for this move. I'm at eight reps, which is fine with me. <laughs> I know I have room to go up, with this move, I can go heavier as I progress through this series. Have a breather, have some fluid, have some aminos, have whatever you're having. Rehydrate, feel free to stretch your chest out a little bit if you like. Do not just rush on to the next set. When we're going heavier like this, we really wanna give our muscles an opportunity to recover. You may need more rest than even what I'm taking. Please feel free to take it. All right, moving on. Set yourself back up in position. Get your hands equal distance from the center point of your bar. Mine are just about in the line above my shoulders, which feels like a nice stable position. Elbows are flared out slightly here. And I lift the bar up, press it straight up over my chest, engage the core, flattening my back out against my bench. And as I bring the bar down, I'm not resting it on my chest, I'm letting it make contact with my chest, however. Good, and I'm not pushing it out away from me, I am pushing it fairly straight up with a slight angle. Keep breathing, count your reps. Keep your wrists straight. We're balancing out our row. Bring your barbell back in position when you're done with this set. Great job. And go ahead and write down your reps. One last set of these. Woo. Swing those arms. I think it would feel good to do a little chest stretch personally, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lean into the bar with my arm up at a 90 degree angle. Opening up through that chest. Stretching out the muscles that are working right now. Go ahead and do that on the other side as well. Just using my squat rack as a balance point, pulling my elbow back away from me, opening up through the chest on the left side this time. And we have one final set of this move. 
when you're ready, feel free to take long, as long as you need to recover. You want to be able to really power through each set, and if we're not fully recovered, we can't really harness our strength. Just like if we're not properly fueled, we can't really harness our strength. All right, let's go ahead and reposition ourselves. Find, brace your core, find strength and stability through it, and replace your hands around around shoulder, around your shoulders. Maybe your thumbs are right like at your shoulder width. It's totally fine if they're a little different. Now your elbows are not flared wide out, they're flared out a little bit, right? So they're not in tight to your body like this. They're not all the way out here. They're somewhere in the middle, but they're definitely out. So we're gonna lift up, press straight up, and then we're gonna draw that bar down to our chest, allowing it to make contact without allowing the full weight of the bar to press down on us. And then we're gonna press back up. Great job. This is your last set. Last one for me. see me well. I'm just going to go ahead and flatten the bench out, make myself a little more space. And I'm going to be using my barbell for this across my lap, putting weight plates on it. However, you can also do this very easily with dumbbells. You can put them across your lap, one or two. You're going to balance at the base of your shoulder blades against your bench, drop your hips down and thrust up with your hips. So the weight is gonna be working for your glutes for you. Get lots of glute and hamstring uh, work here. Oh. Yeah. Set up in a good position. Move this out to the side. So I'm gonna use my barbell, as I mentioned, and I'm going to load it up with some weight. We're almost to the end. Doing so well. your weight plates on there. If you're in a gym, like I talked about before, you can go ahead and slide those little squeezies on the ends. And I'm actually going to do two moves in this final series uh, together. I'm going to do the, the hip thrust and a bicep curl. And for my bicep curl today, I'm going to go ahead and use dumbbells. So go ahead and grab a weight set that works for you for bicep curls. And remember, if your first set is too light, you can always increase the weight. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up these weights. And a barbell is also fine. I'll probably increase to that in some upcoming weeks. Go ahead and start with the bicep curl once you've got your station set up for your hip thrusts. So bring your shoulders back and down as if your back was touching a wall. Make sure your feet are nice and neutral. Engage your core. Brace it. Face your palms towards me and keep your elbows tucked in tight to your body. Bring your arms up and then lower them down with control. Good. Keep your back nice and flat. Don't let it round or curve. Keep your shoulders back. Don't let them round forward. Don't let your upper back curve forward. Count your reps. I want you in that 8 to 12 rep range. Is it getting tough? 
Are your elbows wanting to come out from your sides of your body? Just hang in there, try to get to eight. You may need to use less weight next time. It is challenging doing the move with both arms at the same time, um, but I have a reason for that. And it's because sometimes when we do it with a single arm, we tend to recruit other muscles. So I want you to really isolate your bicep heads here. Great job. Eight to 12, count your reps. That's it for me. I'm gonna bend the knees to set those off to the side. I'm gonna write down my reps and my weight for my curls. And I'm gonna go ahead and get into my hip thrust setup. If you're using dumbbells, keep in mind your hips and glutes are gonna be stronger than your arms. So you wanna consider that you probably could do at least twice the amount of resistance you did for your bicep curls with your hips and glutes. Just something to keep in mind if you're hesitant to go up and wait. Just know that you know your glutes and hips are a lot stronger and your legs are a lot stronger than your arms. Just something to keep in mind when you're getting equipment. All right. I'm gonna get in position. Now you wanna center, if you're using a barbell, you wanna center it over your hips. And if it bothers you at all, you can take a towel or pad and put it here between your bar and your hips. I does not bother me at all unless I go up really high in weight. Um, and this weight is gonna be challenging for me, but it doesn't, doesn't hurt my hips. But if it bothers you at all, please support yourself. So first and foremost, get it in position. Use your elbows and back to get yourself up and elevated. We're gonna lower our hips down. We're gonna drive our hips up and forward, squeeze at the top, lower down, squeeze at the top. Keep your knees tracking out and aligned with your toes. We're gonna pause at the top. Good. Eight to 12. By the way, totally fine if you want to lean all the way back like this or if you want to keep your chin tucked in both of these are going to work the glutes and the hamstrings just fine just make sure that you keep that core locked in place nice and tight your knees track over the toes oh my gosh i am feeling this whoa i got two to go <laughs> oh my gosh it's that pause that pause really gets me. And release down when you're done. You could have probably done, maybe you did more than me. Oh, give yourself a quick stretch. Breathe, you're doing amazing. You're almost done with this. I'm gonna go ahead and write down my reps for the hip thrusts. And I'm gonna go back to our bicep curls when you're ready. Oh my goodness. How those legs feel? And now <laughs> we did squats, we did deadlifts, we did hip thrusts. That's a lot. This is a high volume session. All right, just like last time, engage that core shoulders back and down in their sockets, palms facing forward, keep those elbows in close to your body, and let's curl it right up, and then down and release. Keep your core strong. You got this. Try to hit the same number of reps as last time. Especially if you're using the same amount of weight. If you change your weight, obviously it's a new calibration. When you're done, bend your knees to set your weights off to the side and write down how many reps you did, if you had a weight change at all.
I know you can't see Bodhi right now, but he is snoring so loud. It's like this ambiance to my workout. <laughs> so cute. Just letting me know he's there. There's lots of ways that he does that. Some of them don't smell very good. <laughs> There's nothing like when you're working out and you're breathing hard and then your dog lets one rip and you're just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, I know some of you can relate. Okay, we're gonna set up for our second set of hip thrusts. Oh, let's go. Get yourself in position, whether you're using your barbell or your dumbbells, and it may be that you want to go up a little bit and wait. Maybe your last set you were like, oh, it was so easy to do 12, or I was easily able to hit 12, could have done more. Go ahead and add a little weight. This is California. This is calibration. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that plate, that bar centered right over my hip crease, using my elbows and my back and my hips all together to lift myself up. The edge of the bench is at the apex or right at the base of my shoulder blades. And I've got the bar really balanced across my hips. If you're holding dumbbells, you might wanna hold both of them on either side of your hip crease. Lower down, keep your knees evenly spaced and drive up pause lower down up pause lower down count your reps try and hit the same number of reps as last time if you're using the same amount of weight great job come on me please continue if you had a couple more reps to go I'm gonna write down my my reps Whew. almost done one last set of both moves and you are finished and we're gonna do a little stretch cool down and you will you'll have accomplished this awesome strength training full body workout for today. Woo. All right, bicep curls, last set, best set. Go ahead and pick up your weights. Shoulders back and down in their sockets as if they were up against a wall. Engage your core. Feet are evenly spaced. Palms turn out. Elbows tuck in. So we've really got that rotator cuff in a nice neutral optimal position so that we can target the biceps. Go ahead and begin your curls, keeping your elbows locked in. Great job. Great job, come on. your reps. Stay focused. All right, when you're done, you go ahead and set your weighted objects aside or put them away because that was the last set that we needed them for. For the curls, you can go ahead and write down your reps. And we're moving back to our last set of barbell hip thrusts or dumbbell hip thrusts, your choice. Now, as I'm sitting here and I'm just gonna give myself another quick breather, I'm gonna do the figure four stretch for my glutes and back. So I'm gonna take my right foot, cross it over my knee and lean forward, opening up through my right hip. Just a nice stretch to do in between. I encourage you to stretch in between your reps and sets. Even if it's just a little bit here and there, it'll feel great. And it'll give you a little jump on our stretch and cool down. You won't have to do quite as much, quite as long. You'll just feel great. Okay, go ahead and bring yourself down. Get your bar or your dumbbells in position. Use your arms, back, and hips. 
to bring yourself up so that you're in a reverse tabletop position. And make sure that your feet are just the right distance away from your seat so that as you drop down, you have plenty of stability and come up and pause, lower it down, come up and pause, lower it down. Keep those knees tra tracking out and in line. Great work, come on. Boy, my hamstrings are feeling this today. <laughs> so great. So strong, come on. Count your reps. Hold a little beat at the top and when you're done, you can go ahead and clean up your weights. That was really good. Awesome job. Finish your set. When you're cleaning up plates and barbells, just a couple of tips to keep in mind. You're gonna use that same good form that I'm always cueing you on with picking things up from the floor. We bend our knees. Use the strength of our core engaged with our back and our glutes. And we don't just use our back, which if you're just lazily bending over and picking things up, that can, you can hurt yourself. With a barbell, I like to grip it closer to the top of the bar, allowing it to do it some of the work for me. Then I reach my hand down, pick it up, and put it back. Part of a workout complete is a clean space. Just like in the kitchen when we're cooking, we respect our space. We set it up for our next use or for the use of someone else. Don't forget to write down your final set. And I'm going to also move my bench back to where it belongs. Again, with a bench, same idea, you want to bend down, and if it's got these nice rolly wheels, you just want to use your advantage here of your squat form to help guide you back and forth. So we're going to do a little, just a quick cool down stretch. Let's go ahead and start in a down dog position. So hands just below your shoulders, lift your hips up high, Press up through your hips, sink down through your heels. Enjoy this nice stretch for your back as well as for your hamstrings and legs. Float forward, lower down, drop your knees down. Go ahead and come up halfway, opening up through your chest. Nice job. Oh, come up to your knees. Little tabletop, go ahead and round your back into a cat spine, looking down between your feet. Drop your chest, look up, cow spine. Enjoy this little stretch, good. Come back to neutral spine, wiggle the hips around a bit. Go ahead and send your hips up again. Step your feet through, enjoy a nice forward fold, letting your head hang, feeling the stretch up through the back of your legs. Walk your hands up, gentle contacting pressure all the way. Stretch your arms up high overhead. Let's do a little side bend. You can bring your feet out a little wider, gently bending over to your left, up, and then gently bending over to your right. Nice. You can, once again, do a quick chest stretch. Flat elbow, flat wrist up against a wall surface, stepping forward with the same side leg as the arm that's stretching back. Just a gentle tug here, just like the way any stretch should feel. It should feel stretchy, not painful. Sending some breath and oxygen through this just by thinking about the muscle we're stretching. Repeat this on the other side when you're ready. Nice job. I'm gonna go ahead and use my bench. I'm gonna bring my left foot up onto it for a little Additional hamstring stretch, just leaning forward over my leg. I'm not pressing down on my leg, just contacting pressure. I can also reach for my feet. And then I'm gonna go ahead and round my head forward, bringing my knee down as far down as it feels comfortable into that stretch where we're feeling that nice deep stretch up through the back of the leg. 
can hold that for as long as you like. When you're ready, switch to the other leg. Begin by just walking yourself forward. And then when you're ready, you can relax into it, rounding your back, reaching your nose down towards your knee. Nice job. And just another couple pigeon stretches, just because they're so great for the hips and glutes. So just drawing your knee out to the side, walking the other leg back, bringing your hands in front of you. If you're more flexible, of course, feel free to bring your forehead all the way down, sink into it. You can also stay right up here. Strength doesn't come from just how powerfully we can push through things. It also comes from our ability to be flexible. This is true of life, in the gym, all of these places. So it's imperative that with these really powerful strength workouts, we are taking the time to stretch afterwards. We're taking the time to get ourselves warmed up. Many of the body weight workouts I do, the conditioning type workouts I do, we're doing a full body warm up right in that first round. Uh, it's, it's okay to uh, not spend extra time warming up for those. You're, 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 you're maximizing your time in those types of workouts with the first round. We aren't going as hard as we get to as we go through the workout. Um, with workouts like this, they're more low impact, more about resistance. It is a good idea to do what the, work, the warm up like we did today. You're gonna feel less sore than you would have after this workout because of this additional self-care that you're doing. That's sort of bookending your workout. I've switched to my other leg now for my pigeon stretch. Just really enjoying this, this stretch in my thighs. Those sumo deadlifts really work your thighs and your outer glutes. So the pigeon stretch is just a fantastic way to get into those muscles, stretch them out. All right. <laughs> Really excellent work today. Thank you so much for joining me. And I know what was a little bit longer of a workout than what you're used to from me probably. However, I just want you to know that we have so much variety available to you. So if you are interested in this type of training or you like longer workouts, this is available to you. I've got my amazing Lioness Strength Training Program, or of course we have weight training programs inside of Rock Your Life, my online home workout studio and fitness community. It's just amazing. We have so many different types of challenges. We have challenges that use your own body weight to help you build a strong foundation and work for you no matter where you are. We have uh, challenges that incorporate just some simple dumbbells or uh, resistance objects, um, stretchy bands. We also have workouts like this, challenges like this that incorporate extra resistance. So if you're interested in this, just want you to know that we offer lots of variety because as women, we have the power and capability to do all different types of training and we want to be able to meet you where you're at. So check it all out use the free resources on the bettyrocker.com check out my workouts check out my programs and as always i'm here for you we're happy to answer your questions myself and the team betty rocker coaches and we'd love to support you in reaching your fitness and health goals as always i'm betty rocker you are so awesome and amazing i look forward to seeing you again real soon bye for now